What up, sports car collectors? This is Jason, the zombie collector extraordinaire. And uh, I went to a card show. It was my first card show in a coon's age since March. Uh, now, in Indiana here, we're not in crazy psycho land like a lot of other parts of the United States. I believe about July, I want to say, maybe even June, but definitely July, we're already... A few places were starting to do card shows again. But since I was on my uh, self-imposed sabbatical or whatever you want to call it, I wasn't going to shows. And then the biggest ball card show, the J&J &J All-Star Sports Card Show that ha is held in Fishers, they started back up, I want to say, in August. So they were like two or three months behind a few of the other shows. They were being super, super cautious. It's whatever. Um, I'm not going to throw shade at anybody uh, there, but... <clears throat> they were the uh, the ones last to come into the party. Now that they're back, uh, you did wear a mask at their show, and they did do a screening for uh, your uh, temperature, which I did not see coming, but hey, it was fine. Everybody had to wear a mask, and it was like hardcore about it. Like nobody, except if you were eating or drinking something, were people like just hanging them down by their, by their chins or their double chins uh, in some cases. Um, but... Uh, they were uh, big about the um, social distancing and all that. But we all know you go to a card show, we're all next to each other, all digging through bins and boxes and all that. So aside from the mask and this, the temperature check, you're pretty much, you know, rolling the dice. So that being said, I went to one of my favorite guys' uh, tables, and uh, he's a guy from Louisville, Kentucky, like myself. And uh, he usually has some really cool stuff. He has some super high-end he does football, baseball, and basketball, uh, autographs, you know, high end, like the real crazy relic cards, autograph cards, rookie cards, all the, all the chine or chine. Uh, but I, I like to go there because he has a lot of like mid-level stuff. And then of course he has some, some, uh, uh, bargain bins, but his bargain bins are more in that dollar to $3 range, $4 range, $5 range. Uh, but he usually has some pretty nice stuff. But he always has a box of autographs and autographs of in like that low to mid grade range, uh, low to mid stuff of, you know, autographs. And so I want to show you what I have. I picked up all these cards, I believe, for, I want to say, $60. So maybe I spent, maybe I went over, I don't know. You'll, you can tell me. I can handle the truth. Uh, the truth will set you free. So, uh, so the card prices or the stickers on the cards are, is not what I paid. The price, He was given like 30% off or a little bit more. I went on eBay and looked. They were all pretty reasonable within like striking range of what you'd pay on eBay. Uh, in the quick time I was going through it. There's a couple of them and I just, honestly, they were such low numbered autographs that I just was like, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm going to pay roughly between eight to 12 bucks on most of these cards anyways, if not more, including shipping and taxes and everything. So I'm like, I'll just pay the extra baby buck or two and have it in hand today. So that being said, the first non-autograph I picked up was the Greg Maddox die cut from, I believe this is, is it Fleer, I want to say, who did this? Or Flair from 94. 94 Flair. I just love this card. I think he had $8 on it. I did not pay anywhere near $8. And then he put up, I should really just take it out of this thing. It's probably what I should have done. I probably should have done that before the video even started. But it is what it is. So let's take that out from there. There we go. That makes it a little bit better. So there you have this Greg Maddox. Again, I'm inspired by Bill the Hoff Collector, Hall of Fame Collector. But I saw this and for, you know, probably about four or five bucks, you know, you would spend that easily on Facebook or on YouTube or on eBay uh, for that card. Next up is Cocaine Keith Hernandez. Uh, card here. All these cards were on card autographs. He had 15 on the card. Um, but then I think he probably dropped it down to around five bucks or so. It's probably about that range, I would say, between five and eight bucks. Again, shipping wise and taxes and fees and everything else. The back. I don't think this one uh, is numbered, but I didn't have a, a Keith Hernandez autograph. And I've been inspired by a lot of you YouTubers to just say, you know, 
If you see a car, just buy the card, you know? If you get a good price on it, just do it. Like, I've always passed up cards I later on regret. And I've been thinking, I've been really wanting to get on the 80s and 90s guys I grew up with, which you're getting ready to see right now, uh, autographs. Either because they're superstars, they may be Hall of Famers, and one of the guy's cases, he probably will be eventually. And then I know that I've been watching and listening to a lot of Mike, uh, baseball collector now on Bench Clear, and some of his guests where they say, you know, you're going to regret it when they're no longer around and their card prices go up. And, I mean, we all know that intellectually that happens. The prices go skyrocket, and then they maybe will come down some, but they probably usually never go back to where they were. And I'm not saying Keith Hernandez, by any stretch, his cards are going to go through the roof, but it got me to think, like, that's true. If I see a good deal or what I perceive as a good deal and I don't, I don't mind spending a few bucks to do it, what am I waiting for? So there we go. Next up, that's another one I thought was really cool. I liked it. Uh, he's a big fan favorite in Minnesota. And for some other people, he's not such a fan favorite. Kent Herbeck with the Minnesota Twins. I thought this was a great looking card from, a, what is it, an archive, signature archive 2017. This is a low numbered card. It was out of 24 on card autograph. I just love this card. It's the 1987, which is a. It has a lot of things going for it. One, it's 87. I love the 87 card. Next, it's a low number card out of 24, which is super cool. This is number 15. Uh, it's Ken Herbeck. He has like a love-hate relationship with a lot of people. But I remember watching him play with the Minnesota Twins. And so there you have that card. It's, it looks like it's a buyback. I could be wrong, but it looks like it. I mean, this card looks authentic, like from 87. And again... My lack of knowledge sometimes some of these cards are obvious. So there's Kent Herbeck. Uh, next one up is, let's go with this one right here. Let me take it out of the bag. Uh, the bag kind of has a lot of stuff on it I don't, that I don't need. Next up is Todd Zeal. Again, you know, this is a uh, Signature Archives Tops from 2019, so last year. This is only number out of 19. And this is number six out of 19. Always was a big fan of Todd Zill. He came up through Louisville, Kentucky, when uh, Louisville Red, the Louisville Redbirds, the Louisville uh, Cardinals, were the farm system for the St. Louis Cardinals. And uh, he was a big, big uh, fan favorite. I remember watching him play as a kid, probably in the 80s, whenever that was. I'm pretty sure it was like late 80s when we were watching him play. And then he got called up to St. Louis, and then, you know, it is what it is. But uh, Todd Zill is one of those, like, perennial, like, just, you know, I don't want to say all-stars because that wasn't the case, but he was, like, always a guy that was doing well in um, in, in the MLB during his time frame. He was he was in lots of important teams. He was a, um, a very good ball player. He had a very nice career. And uh, just seeing this card brought some joy, brought some real joy. So you got Todd Zeal out off the Bowman. Next up is uh, he's named after a superhero. Flash. We got Tom Gordon right here on the uh, tops card when he was with the Kansas City Royals. I love this card. This is numbered out of seventeen. So I think I'm, the numbers are going down. First it was twenty six. Then what was it? It was. Oh, this was also 17. So this is another 17. But this is a 14 out of 17 right there, Tom. Flash Gordon. Absolutely love this card here, guys. He was a very, very... I mean, he had... I think he was an all-star a couple times. As was, I believe, uh, Todd Zill was an all-star a few times. But, you know, he was an all-star. He had a very... Uh, you know, I thought he, he had a Hall of Fame-ish type of career. I don't think he's a Hall of Famer, but he definitely had... Quite a few seasons that he was very effective as a closer, as a pitcher. I really liked him a lot as a kid growing up. I just really enjoyed this card. Again, all these all, all of them are on card autographs. And these are the ones, guys, that most people, when they get them, I got like Micah with those guys, they're like, not the one you're looking for, you know, and it's fine. Uh, you know, when you're, you know, spending 40 bucks per, per box or 35 bucks per box, I 100%, if I would have spent 35, 40 bucks on him, not a happy camper paying 10 to 15, you know, not, I don't feel so bad about it. In some cases more like eight or whatever. Cause the last one's like kind of like the big boy, big boy. So there's the last one. So this one is the one I waited to the end. 
future Hall of Famer in my in my humble opinion. This is only number to three. Only three were made of this, and it is awesome. It has Jose Jose Posada in it, but it's not his autograph. It is of Omar Vizquel right there. Omar Vizquel autograph on card on the top stadium club, I believe. Yes. Two out of three postseason right there. The autograph, you can see blue between his legs jumping. I just thought it looked really, really good. I mean, this was the one I spent probably like 20-ish bucks on, I would say. I think he had it for 35 I spent 20 on this, I'm sure, around about. So this was like the majority of what I spent my money on. Man, this car looks awesome. Only out of three on card autograph of what I believe is a future Hall of Famer, criminally underrated. I believe if you look at his stats, and maybe I'm wrong because I haven't looked at Ozzy Smith's stats, I think I feel like they're very comparable. Very comparable. Um, so, anyways, guys, that's what I did. So, you know, I can handle the truth if you said 60 bucks. Yeah, I don't know about 60 bucks, Jason. I would have spent maybe 40. I would have spent 40 cents. Uh, I wouldn't have spent anything. That's cool, man. I just thought I don't do this very regularly. I also have a bag of like cards I spent uh, ten cents on and a dollar on, or three for a dollar. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do another separate video of that. Well, maybe I made my money back. Who knows? But uh, just thought I'd show these cards. Hopefully, you all enjoyed. I want to do something a little different because I'm going to be doing a lot of just uh, Maddox cards. I pulled all my Mattingly inserts, so that's coming up. Also, I'm also going to do Ichiro inserts, and I probably Barry Larkin. So I've been working on that quite a bit recently. But I wanted to kind of throw up a couple different videos so it doesn't get too, like, stale. So, guys, hoping you enjoyed. Again, let me know what you think. Honestly, I can handle it. Uh, I'm kind of, I don't know if I want to say I have buyer's remorse after I pull the trigger at 60. But I'm, the more I think about it, I was like, maybe I'm okay. Maybe 60 is right on the button. And that's okay, too. So, anyways, guys, until next time, thanks for watching. Peace.